Hi guys, this is Blackie. Okay, another story time with Blackie. Today we're going to talk about cold and why cold. Now we've already talked about how we generate heat and how we layer up. But let's talk a little bit more about the physical reasons, okay? The deeper your understanding, the easier it is for you to recognize the conditions in your environment and you can then adapt to those conditions. So let's start at the unnatural, natural state that we live in. And I call it that for a reason. All right, we're going to talk about our little stick figure here. He lives in a world where he's living in air conditioning or heating and etc. And on average, the average person is going to stay somewhere in their unnatural environment between 60 degrees to 80 degrees on average all day now why that's important is the body is used to that that is what we generate for so when we get a little cool we add a little heat get a little hot we sweat a little but we seem to be comfortable in that because we're un really unimmersed in the real environment around us we have an unnatural bubble around us that stays in that temperature range. So we don't have to generate a great deal. The human body is capable of adapting to ridiculous swings in temperature. I remember watching a Bear Gorillas show a couple of years ago where he was talking about Arctic conditions and cold like that. And there was a swimming pool that they had that the water had been artificially dropped in temperature down into the high 20s, which is below freezing, but you just keep a saline content where it won't freeze. And these instructors were in the pool, and Bear got into it. Instantly, he just went to, uh, you know. And they're sitting there talking. And for the next several minutes, they're talking because they've become used to it. They were teaching water immersion in extreme cold conditions like the North Atlantic and stuff like that, where it can freeze you to death in minutes because it's coming straight down from the Arctic. That's the reason people in Titanic froze very quickly, remember, because they were not used to that environment. But these men had become adapted to it because they'd been immersed in this environment to where water that cold, yes, it's cold, but they have a much longer compensation time than the guy in our stick figure between 60 and 80. It's kind of like thinking of it as a range in a gun. If all you ever shoot is zero to 20 yards, and suddenly you're facing a target that's 60 yards away, three times as far away. Oh, well, I just did. Uh huh. But the body sees that target temperature as being greater. Now, let's look at that target temperature for just a minute. The average person is going to be somewhere around 98 degrees on average. There's going to be some variations in that. So if it's 60 degrees is the actual temperature right now, that is only a 38 degrees that the body has to create. What if it's 20 degrees? Suddenly that body has to create 78 degrees of warmth. See what I'm saying? That's a whole lot more horsepower it's got to generate. So our body has to do this. If we're not acclimated, to it, then we're forced to use artificial conditions to make up for that shortfall, okay? Now, our little stick figure friend here, he's going to lose heat two major ways. There's actually multiple ways to do it, but we're going to talk about two major. One is going to be convection, and that's the wind moving around us. Now this will vary greatly by what the moisture content of that wind and how efficiently it cools. But for the moment, just take it at base value of wind conveying. Conveyor belt conveying. And that around our little stick figure is imaginary shield of warm air that our body is generating. Okay? Our little stick figure friend here is butt naked. He's just standing there. So he's having to generate that. As the wind comes, it pushes like smoke from a fire 
this heat column out this way and this side of the heat column is lost. And so you feel cold on that side, naturally, we know that. But that side is now having to fight harder to generate more heat and therefore try to compensate for the loss of it. And if it's 20 degrees, it's having to burn calories like crazy. What if it hasn't had this opportunity? He's been living indoors most of his life. And the body doesn't really know how to ramp it up that much. And so it becomes a greater challenge to the body. So they feel colder, you know. But what happens after he's been in this environment a few days, a few hours, whatever actually takes, for me personally, it takes me about 72 hours to where I really start adapting to these extreme conditions. And that's because my body's used to adapting to it. Yours may take much longer or even shorter, depending on you. But because of that, the body has to step up. Now, a little stick figure here, due to the wind conveying it, he's got to generate more heat. So just the wind or moving air column can do that. It can also cause other things. When our lips dry out, we call it chapped lips. When our skin dries out because it's not used to this dry air or this wind blowing across is drying us out, we've been in this artificial environment, we call that wind burn. It's also when, like here in my south, where the humidity is somewhere between 60 and 90 degrees, 90 percent most of the year, suddenly a cold front runs in, especially those that show up in early September, and suddenly the Moisture content there drops down in the 20s or 30s, and everybody's suddenly going, and they're sniffing like great. Well, our noses have been inhaling water in like a fog of water, and suddenly you turn the tap off. Suddenly the air is dry. Now it's drying out our sinuses, just like wind burn on our, our skin or our lips. Our sinuses start to dry out. This is very noticeable with somebody riding a motorcycle who's not used to it and they got an open face helmet and that wind hitting them in the face dries out their sinuses and they're always oh, yes, 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 yes. so their sinuses dried out because their body is not adapted to it yet so the effects of wind are convection moving the heat column out of the way drying out our lips drying out our sinuses drying out our skin so we need to compensate for that. We can compensate for that with layers, moisturizers, something to protect, to put over our face to kind of breathe warmer air and kind of re-add moisture back because we breathe out moisture to help it. Chapstick on the lips. Those are things we have to do for that. Now, the other biggie that we're going to talk about right quick a little shield there for a second. Pop him back up. And that's going to be this. We have a surface. We have our little stick figure guy right here laying down. Now it's convection is conveyor belt and it's conduction like a train conductor okay his direct contact remember that shield of warm air that he's producing it's naturally rising up and away from him now when you're standing up this heat is rising so from the lower extremities it's rising up trying to warm the body, but when you're laying horizontal, it's going up and away from you. But that contact with the ground is conveying heat. So you're trying to heat this ground, and that ground is a whole lot harder to heat. It's sucking it away from us. So remember that having to fight to generate it? You have X amount of calories available to do this, and when that runs low, you get cold in a hurry. And so, this is what is going to suck the heat out of us. Much faster even than the wind, but it can depend. Sometimes a cold, wet, damp wind can actually suck heat out of you faster than that can. 
or can be more detrimental to us. And these conditions are like a pendulum that swings back and forth. It's dry and it's windy, it's cold and it's damp, or it's dry and it's damp, and it's always changing conditions. Our environment is very dynamic, and so we have to adapt to it. So, we know that the winds can blow it away. We know that contact can suck it away from us. What do we do about it? Well, what we've always done thus far is either move to an environment where it's warmer and better for us, or we have to add layers to us. So we have our stick figure buddy again. And now we're going to add layers to him. But how you add layers makes a difference. Because we have the wind. We have contact with the ground. So for our feet, we want something that's going to insulate us, boots. I, in the winter, will wear a size boot bigger than I normally wear the rest of the year. And I get thick, thick work socks, and I may wear two pair of those on my feet. Right there, because I want to keep my feet from becoming cold. Big factor in that, in your hands and your feet, that's where the arteries terminate, transfer over to the veins to bring the blood back. So there's a whole lot of blood in the hands and the feet also in the ears and the head. And so therefore, I want to warm that or insulate that. Because remember, the blood is already pumped from me to there. This is the return trip. So if my hands are ice cold, what do you think it's doing to that blood coming back to me? Chilling that blood. This is acting like a radiator and can cool me in my arms quicker and my therefore my chest. Now I've got to burn more calories trying to pump it out there to it, especially with your feet. You've got to take the big leg arteries down there, terminate, and turn that blood back. And if they're just a block of ice sitting there from the knee down, that's chilling that blood before it ever comes back to the body, to the core, to start warming it. So I want to definitely protect that. Now my legs and my, say, upper body from the neck down. In this area, I want to make a shield that traps that bubble of warm air that my body has protected. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. If I have a bare skin hand and I put a really thin cotton glove on it, have I insulated it very much? Not really, because the heat will transfer by convection, just like the ground, directly from my hand through the glove to the air, where, uh, con uh, excuse me, conduction through the glove, convection in the air will make the heat go away. So I need something that traps it a little bit better than that. I need a thicker layer. So what if I put a thick glove on? Yes, the thick glove has dead air pockets trapped into it like Swiss cheese idea. And so as this heat is being conducted through the material, those pockets of insulated air capture and warm up. And that's a poor conductor to the next layer. So it holds that heat. It's like me pouring water into a glass. I'm capturing it and holding the heat that's generated by my hand. Well, that is true of the body as well. So I do not want tight fitting clothing. On my base layer, all the way against me, my, say, long handles, I like a pair of silky long handles in the winter because it allows freedom of movement slides. My next layer up, I wear polypro, which is thicker and fluffier. Think of it like that Swiss cheese. And it therefore captures that heat better and it's slower to let it pass through. I want to Hold on to it. I can't, I can't stop the train. The train of heat going away from me is going to happen, but I can slow it down so it 
stays here as long as it can. So I have to generate it at a slower rate, thus saving my resource calories so I don't have to burn them so fast. Okay? Now we come to the biggie. Right there. The head. The head has the brain in it. The head has all these blood vessels and everything, and the head is one of the biggest conductors of uh, heat there is. And when you ain't got any insulation on the top, it goes away quickly. The body has to heat this up. The body has to heat the groin, the armpits, and the head. That's the reason it's always warm. When they're telling you your hands are cold, stick it in your armpit because you'll warm it up, or stick it in your crotch. If you're sitting down, put your legs around it and warm it back up to prevent frostbite. But the idea here is the body's going to heat those no matter what. There's a vital function there that we need. So it's going to keep it warm. Why is the groin that important? One, for reproduction. Two, what happens if the bladder freezes? The bladder has the water in it. If you get cold enough that that bladder, that jug of water sitting just under the skin, got cold enough to freeze, it's open. So the body guarantees there's going to be insulation there to keep that warm. The head, we've got to keep thinking. So we have to keep the brain warm. So we need insulation, multiple layers of insulation over this. Now, I wear my big old hat, which is great in the summer, great in the winter. It does a great job. But notice this neck. There's a lot of blood, a lot of heat loss there. So I need to find a way to capture that heat. Now, I've already talked about I'm going to have my polypros. I'm going to have my silks on. I'm going to have my polypros, and they zip up to here. I'm going to have my outer shirt. That's going to come up like this. You know what? These collars ain't just for show. Collars are for doing this and pulling them up to cup up to the back of the neck like that. And then a scarf or something wrapping around to stop this heat loss of that heat just naturally coming out of these garments. Because as I walk, as I breathe, I'm pumping like a bellows and that heat's coming up and out. I want to trap that. But at night, I'll have a big thick toboggan on as a good heavy insulator. When I was a child, I remember my, I lived in a house that didn't have any heating. We had one room in the house that had heat. And so the bedroom didn't have heat. And we'd be in there and it'd be 20 degrees. My grandmother would take a towel and fold it up and put it over her head where it went from her nose up and her covers come up to there. So there's a little slit, you'd see her nose. And that was it. She'd grown up in a house that didn't have heat either. But that insulating the head is the big factor. So, I watch a lot of times, I'll see people out there, ladies are the worst, and I don't mean to be down on you ladies, but it's, it's a fashion thing, you, we know it. You wanna wear tight blue jeans. And you say, oh, well, these are thick jeans. No, those are the worst things there are. The US military did a study years ago of insulation value of clothing, of material. What was it good for? What was it not good for? And they, after extensive study, found out that wool was the best choice in many things and blah, 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 blah. And that denim was absolutely the worst choice for the winter. That's the reason they don't make anything out of it. There is no clothing in denim other than the work dungarees. And those are not supposed to be worn in the field. They're only used on bases and stuff for getting dirty because they were cheap. But it was because denim actually conveyed heat away faster then an uninsulated, they took five gallon stainless steel cans, put water in it, brought it up till it was a, a, exactly boiling temperature. And then they sat it in various conditions and saw how fast the water temperature dropped to a certain temperature. How fast was the drop rate? And they found that slightly damp denim cooled faster than the bare empty can, uh, the bare can sitting there with no insulation whatsoever. It naturally cools you. That's the reason we love to wear denim down here in the south, because once they get wet, they evaporate and they cool you. In the winter, wrong thing to wear. So do not wear denim in the winter because of that. And then denim jackets and everything, they look cool. But ladies, denim pants in the winter, you cannot help but secrete up to a quart of water through your skin, whether you like it or not. 
just by respiration of the skin. And because of that, your jeans get damp and they get you cold in a hurry. You want dead air space. So when you're gonna be out in the field, I wear kind of baggy, loose clothing because I wanna trap that warm air that I've generated around me. If I'm in that convection current of a wind coming this way and I have to sit here, I'll pull the loose slack to that side, act as a barrier. So it's not up against me, it's further away at all possibility. And therefore, I am insulating myself the best. Hope this gives you some ideas, guys. Please leave any questions or comments below. And thank you very much for supporting my channel. Till next time, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.